Now, the very first thing that we, uh, or the very next thing that we want to get into is the great debate. Positioning yourself as a specialist versus a generalist. And we're on page 10. There are some positives and some negatives when it comes to positioning yourself as a generalist. Some of the positives is that there'll, there'll be a great variety in terms of the different clients that you take on. And everybody, you kind of have an idea of what we're talking about when it comes to being a specialist versus a generalist. I'm not talking in the legal sense. When I use the word specialist, I'm not talking in the legal sense, I'm talking in the branding, the positioning, the marketing sense, okay? I'm not talking about getting another certification or going back to school. I'm talking about it in the marketing sense of people recognizing you as an expert, as a specialist, this is what this person does. All right, you follow me? Okay. So being a generalist is, is uh, a good example of this. I was looking at a website, oh, maybe um, two or three weeks ago. Came across this website, and uh, I went to their list of services, their service page. And I started scrolling down through, and there were lots of bullet points. I mean, a page of bullet points of different services that they provide. Down at the bottom it said next. Clicked on next. It had another page of services that they provide. And another, and another. We're like five pages deep, okay? And then I click on about us and I'm thinking, oh, wait a minute, there's only four guys in the whole firm. How many different services can they offer? That's a prime example of someone positioning themselves as a generalist in the marketplace. They're saying basically, you know, we can do everything from personal injury to divorce to, you know, basically we're talking in a law firm that covers the womb to the tomb, right? You know, from the time that before you're born till the time that you go in the grave, you know? You don't want to position yourself as a generalist because the, the downside of positioning yourself as a generalist is that you will always be viewed as a commodity. You will always be valued based on your price tag. That's as, high, that's as good as it gets. You ever feel like you're playing the price is right with your clients, right? You know you can get their business, but only if the price is right, which usually means it's the lowest possible one. And they might come across and say, well, we're talking to several other law firms. That's exactly right, yeah. It basically, you know, we refer to those people as the 15 percenters, right? The 15 percent of the population that will always and only buy on price. You know, it's the same population that really loved that ad, that car ad, a number of years ago. You know, can I kick the tires? Will the door fall off the hinges? You know, they want to buy a car, but they want the cheapest price out there, right? They're not going to go for the Mercedes. They're going to go for the Yugo, you know? And those are the 15 percent that you want to identify because these are the 15% that kill your profit margin. These are the ones that kill your practice because you allotted this much time to deal with their case. You're only two weeks into it and they've already spent this much time of your time, <laughs> okay? They're the same people out there that never pay their bills on time. They constantly complain that you never return their phone calls fast enough. They'll never tell anybody what a great job you did, but they'll constantly complain if you make the smallest little mistake. The best thing you can do for your practice Identify those 15 percenters and refer them to your competition. <laughs> Let them deal with them, okay? Because you don't want to have any part of them. Let them waste their time, okay? So that you can go out and find more of the 85% of the population that, does price matter? Sure it does, but so does quality. So does having benefits, you know? So does achieving results. So does having a good relationship with your attorney. You know, the other things that are just as, or if not more than, uh, more important than just money and the bottom line. Okay, so there are some downsides to positioning yourself as a generalist. You'll get less qualified referrals. You'll be viewed as a commodity. You'll have a harder time training your staff. For those of you who have staff, if you're a general practice, it's going to be a lot more difficult for you to train them because four to six months in, they're still trying to figure out what is it that you really do. Whereas if you're a specialist, they're able to answer the phone. Why is it that oftentimes we put the lowest paid person on the front line of answering prospective clients' phones, phone calls, right? The person in your office, chances are pretty good, the person who is lowest paid and lowest on the totem pole is the first person that prospective clients talk to. What's wrong with that? That's not efficient. That's not beneficial to your law firm because that's the person who typically has the least amount of training. They have the least amount of knowledge about what it is you do. They don't know how to qualify a, pro a prospect outside of a cardboard box, right? And so it's very difficult for, for law firms to grow 
unless you properly train your staff on what a good client looks like, what a prospective client looks like. Okay? <clears throat> As a generalist firm, It'll be much more difficult to do that. Now, what are some positives of positioning yourself as, as a specialist in the marketplace? Specialists, and again, I'm not talking in the legal sense, can charge significantly higher rates. A lot of our clients, when they start positioning themselves as a specialist in the marketplace, are able to charge 15 to 50% higher than any of their competitors. Yes, that's right, 15 to 50% higher than any of their competitors out there because they're seen as the go-to guy or the go-to gal in their specific industry. They are a recognized expert. And with expert status, you can significantly increase your prices because you're worth it and because you know that. There's not that, pr there's, there's not that push to get you to lower your prices. Also, you'll have more opportunities to offer them extensive services. See, I believe the easiest way to get in the door, especially if you're targeting a business or an organization or a company, is to come in as a specialist. Once you get in the door, you then become, you start branching out and become more of a generalist to that business. But if you try to come in as a generalist, it's almost like you're trying to push against a wall versus coming in at a very sharp angle, coming in very, very refined. You know, there's a reason that a laser beam is small, right? <laughs> a laser beam is not 10 feet wide, it's measured in millimeters. Why? Because it's concentrated effort, it's concentrated focus in one particular point. You can do the exact same thing by developing a very specific, concise, targeted market, and we'll talk about that in just a few minutes. But position, positioning yourself as a specialist in the marketplace allows you to attract more and better clients and more and better referrals. Now, there are a number of different ways that you can start positioning yourself as a specialist. For example, and we'll go into this in just a couple minutes, targeting a specific market can help you position yourself as a generalist. The difference between saying, I work with small business owners, versus saying, I work with small business owners who have 20 to 100 employees, one to five million dollars in revenue, and are some way, uh, and are, are directly connected to the high-tech industry, generally in the software development industry. Big difference there, okay? The other, another way is to do credibility building through published articles and through getting your uh, articles online. Uh, also, coaching your prospects, your clients, and referral sources as to how you are different, different in a good way. You know, not different weird, <laughs> but different in a positive way. And why should someone work with you versus your competitors? So what I'd like you to do over the next couple minutes, I'd like you to turn back to your group. And I'd like to, you to talk about what are two specific ways that you can start positioning yourself as a specialist. Even if you have a general practice area of say, you know, personal injury or immigration law or you know, outside business counsel to small business owners, what's two specific ways that you can start positioning yourself as a specialist in your niche? Okay, go ahead.